If you have been considering buying a headlamp and don't mind spending a little extra money to get the best, then I may have the answer for you. This is the HM65RT from Fenix. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to point out that this headlamp was sent to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. But I also want to mention I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video. So, of course, what we're going to do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the features and the specifications for the headlamp. I'll go over its modes of operation. Then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. So before I go over the specifications and features for the HM65RT from Fenix Flashlight, I wanted to show you what else it came with. So the box that it came to me shipped in, the instruction manual in multiple languages, the warranty registration card, one spare O-ring, and the USB Type-C recharging cable. So let's go over a few of the specifications for the flashlight. So its weight, and that's probably one of the key features as well, can, comes in at 3.2 ounces or 91 grams. Now that is without the included battery, but that is made possible through one very amazing thing, at least to me, and that is this is made from magnesium rather than aluminum. So it is quite a bit lighter than the aluminum version of the same flashlight. So I'll give you the weights with the battery installed and that comes in at five ounces or 141 grams. Now the flashlight does have a dust and waterproof protection of an IP68 and it does have a two meter drop resistance. All right, let's go over a few more of the features of the HM65R-T, T standing for a trail running headlamp from Fenix flashlights. And to begin with, it's the obvious is that it has two LEDs, the floodlight being a neutral white and the spotlight being a cool white. Now it is made from lightweight magnesium as I mentioned and it does have an IP68 dustproof and waterproof rating and it is impact resistance to two meters. It does have a USB type C's charging port which is located on the back of the flashlight here. And it has one more feature which is very interesting and I quite like it a lot and that it has a wide comfortable, breathable, single headband. It does not have what a lot of the heavier flashlights have, which is the one that goes over the top, and that's made possible only because of the lighter weight of the magnesium body for this flashlight. And the other feature on the headlamp is how it is adjusted. So it has a rotary uh, mechanism here that you pull out to allow the headband to expand, snap it in, and then turn it and the headband will tighten up around your head. Works very well and I'll demonstrate this on my head in a few minutes time. Now as far as operating the flashlight, turning it on and off, the first thing I want to point out is that it does have really three ways of protecting it from being turned on accidentally in your backpack or in your pocket. First off, right on the top of the flashlight there is an extension to the frame which covers out over the two operating switches, makes it difficult to get your finger on them unless it's turned forward one click and once they're exposed then of course you can operate the two switches much more easily. It has an electronic electronic lockout which works very well and from the off position you hold down on both buttons for a few seconds time and then you will lock it out so that you can operate cannot turn the lights on. To bring it back into operational mode again you push down on the buttons and it for a few seconds time and it will operate again. And the last feature is kind of unique in that a simple push of the button does not turn the flashlight on. You can see the battery level indicator but just pushing the light quickly Quickly does not turn it on. You actually have to press down and hold on for about a second and a half. And that's true of both of them. And again to turn it off. All right, let's go over the modes of operation and the specifications for each of the levels of lighting. So to begin with, we'll work with the spotlight. So it, holding the button down until the light comes on, it will come in at a low of 130 lumens, which will last for 24 hours and a beam reach of 55 meters. 
Another quick tap takes it up to medium at 400 lumens, which will last for 12 hours and a beam cast of 96 meters. One more press and we'll come up to 1300 lumens, which will last for four hours and a cast of 170 meters. It does not have a memory so that when I turn it off and turn it back on, it starts out at the low lumen setting again. So let's turn that off. Now for the flood, it comes in at a low of five lumens, which will last for 300 hours and cast six meters. A medium of 70 lumens, which will last 36 hours and a cast of 23 meters. And a high of 400 lumens, which will last 12 hours and a cast of 54 meters. And as I mentioned, you can in fact use both the uh, spotlight and the floodlight at the same time. One last thing I wanted to do before we get outside and do some testing is to demonstrate how the head strap works to adjust. So putting the head strap or the flashlight over my head, it's loose at this point, but here is the adjustment button. If I push in and then turn, I can feel it snugging up around my forehead to give me all the support I need to make sure it doesn't move while I'm wearing it. Okay, now let's get outside and do some testing. So we're going to do some testing of the Fenix HM65R-T, the trail running flashlight. And uh, I'm out here in the woods and I have it set at its lowest setting on flood just to give you an idea how much light it's providing me. Uh, no, this is not enough for walking through the woods. It'd be great if I was sitting and reading, maybe doing some chores right at hand, at the end of my hands, but uh, for navigation, no, this wouldn't be enough. Let's take it up to the next level. So that certainly makes a difference. It really does. So this is the medium level for the spotlight. I can see enough that I could easily walk through the woods, at least on a marked path if I wanted to see a little bit more clearly i'd probably take it up to the next level of flood yeah okay <laughs> this is a whole other level of flood altogether. i can see a lot i can see well into the woods and we're using flood i'm not even using the spot so let's turn the flood off and put the spot on so this is the lowest level of spot and already the penetration is deep. I'm at least 75 meters. I can see further into the woods here. Let's take it up to the medium. Much brighter again. And you can see hopefully that the cone of light is much more narrow, much more focused and much wider. I mean, it is so much cleaner, clearer light for for penetration into the woods. One more level. There, look at that. Holy smokes. I cannot imagine needing anything more than this, especially for hiking or trail running. I think uh, it, now, of course, battery uh, burn time would be shorter like this, but this would work for a search and rescue light as well. Amazing. Now, what I'm gonna do is leave it on high and bring up the spotlight at the same time because I wanted to see what it would look like with both the spotlight and the floodlight and it is significant. I have much wider area of light coverage and much greater depth into the woods as well. Of course this will shorten the lifetime of the battery down considerably. All right, I think that's a, a pretty good demonstration. All right, having done quite a bit of testing and some demonstration for you, what are my thoughts on the HM65R-T, T standing for Trail Running Headlamp from Fenix? Well, right off of the top is the fact that it has the twin LEDs. First off, it has the cool white spotlight, which just seems to reach out further into the woods, and it has the warmer neutral light uh, floodlight which seems to give me better color rendition up close. After that it would be the comfort in wearing this for extended periods of time and that is in fact due to two things. 
What primarily, of course, is the lighter weight magnesium body of the headlamp, reducing its weight quite a bit, as well as the wide, uh, comfortable and soft and breathable headband that you can see on the sides. And you'll notice that this does not have the uh, a headband that extends over the top that a lot of the headlamps do. And that is because the extra lightweight uh, means it's not necessary. So I did do a little trail running, even though that doesn't show up in the demonstrations, just to see whether or not this would stay in place or bounce around like a lot of the heavier models do. And it remains very comfortable, very stable in my head, and it doesn't move around at all, which is great. Now, there is one con related to the headband itself, and this may be just me. I don't know if other people would experience this, but it does not extend out far enough for me to allow me to wear the headlamp around a toque or a beanie. That's only a relative con because what I find is that when a lot of headlamps, that's in fact the case. And what I usually do is just allow it to hang around my neck and still position it so I can see where I'm going and I don't have to try and get it around the top of my hat. It also comes with a five-year uh, repair warranty, which I think is industry leading for lights like this. Now, is all perfect with this headlamp? Not quite, but these, are, again, are relative cons. These are things that some people may find to be deal breakers. I certainly don't. Right up front is the fact that it does not have a memory for the last intensity used. So if you run it up to your high on either side, the flood or the spot, and then you turn it off, it's going to start again at low and you're going to have to work your way back up. Again, just relative. It's not a, a big deal at all. Uh, also, the fact that there is no SOS or uh, strobe light might bother some people. But when you think about what this light is intended to be used for, which is trail running, then uh, I don't miss those either. In fact, I think it would probably just complicate the usage of the light. One thing I would like to see is an extra low eco or moon type setting on this. The low on the floodlight is five lumens, which is quite low and you know plenty easy or low enough for reading but if you're looking for something that won't hurt your night vision in the tent and you want to leave it on for an extended period of time that 0.5 or one lumen setting is would be nice to have and again another relative con for some people is the fact that it does not have a red light which is often used to maintain your night vision uh, inside of a tent or or uh, using reading a map or, or whatever at night all those things uh, combined, though, I would say that the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Now, yes, it is a little bit more expensive than other flash uh, flashlights that I have reviewed and other headlamps that you can purchase. But again, as I mentioned in the opening, this is intended for someone who really wants a headlamp that has the versatility of both a spotlight and a floodlight that comes in at a very lightweight, making it comfortable to wear for extended periods of time when you're very active and still has good run times provided by the 18650 battery. Now, speaking of which, I, I did some testing just to see how this would work. And that is, can it be used while it's being recharged? Uh, in other words, can I plug in the Type-C uh, extension cord and put it on a battery bank? So if I've been out for a long period of time and I need to be able to keep going, even though my batteries are starting to run low, the answer is yes, but only on floodlight and only on low. So you still get some illumination, but you don't get a whole lot of illumination while it is charging. Other than that, you know, it, it uh, you know, with the extended battery life that this has, that's probably not going to be an issue for most people. Okay, that's all I have to say about the HM65R-T from Fenix, but I would invite you, if you have any comments or questions on this headlamp, then please put them in the comments section below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.